It's a small world after. Whoa! It's a small, small world. Everybody. Okay. Welcome to Lab 11. Um, we're going to go over different models. We're going to go over the model of the eye and of the ear. So, first, we're going to start with the ear, because ear is much easier, and I'd rather start easy. <laughs> so, this is the ear, of course. So, you have the outer ear which is this section right here and you have your pinna or your oracle which is this little thing right here and this is what you normally see on your outside of your body so this is your pinna or your oracle the little tunnel or hole right here is called your external auditory meatus or external acoustic meatus then you have this right here this is your tympanic membrane or informally known as your eardrum but please don't call it eardrum in your lab exam. It just helps you know what that is. So this is your tympanic membrane. Say tympanic membrane. Yes. Um, then you have your middle ear, which is this little section right here, which goes over down here, which composes of three bones. You see here. So you first have your malleus right here, which connects to your tympanic membrane. Your malleus then connects to your incus right here. And then you have your stapes, which is this little thing right here. So, malleus, incus, then stapes. Then your stapes, if I took this out, if I like remove this, I was able to, but it's not. Um, it would connect to an oval window. So this a hole, there's a hole under here, which is called the oval window, and that's where um, sound would enter through. Um, something else you need to know is the auditory or eustachian tube. So this right here is your auditory or eustachian tube. You can say either or. So auditory tube, eustachian tube, vice versa. I don't know why I said vice versa. Does that mean anything? <laughs> um, next you have your inner ear. So this is part of your inner ear. Um, you have, of course, the semicircular valves, not valves, canals. Semicircular, semicircular canals, which are these little loops right here. And you also have your vestibule is this little thing right here, which is the middle ear right here. That's called your vestibule. And these two help with balance. Um, next you have is your cochlea, or your cochlea, which is this little spiral snail um, thing right here. And this deals with hearing. Um, and then, of course, you have your round window, which is this little hole right there. That's the round window. Then, of course, this thing is falling apart. You have your vestibular cochlear nerve, which you know connects your vestibule, your vestibule, and your cochlea, and they connect together to make your vestibular cochlear nerve. So that's your ear model. Next, we have the eye. This is your eye. <laughs> um, take this part. All right. So we have the fibrous layer, which is the pretty much the outside of the eye. So we have the sclera, which is the white part, and we have the cornea, which is this clear part right here. Um, next we have the vascular layer, which is the middle layer, which composes of your choroid, which is this middle brown layer in the back right here called. You have the ciliary body, which is this little um, thickened area right here, where this, it's this black where it protrudes out like this. That's your ciliary body. Then what comes off your ciliary body is your ciliary processes. Um, you can kind of see it right here, these little purple things. Those are your ciliary bodies, which then connect to your lens. Um, so they kind of, they're the little strings that come off of your ciliary. So this right here, this would be your ciliary body, this edge right here. There will be ciliary processes which connect off of that, which connect to the lens. So this is the lens. And then you have the iris and the pupil. Um, woo. You have the colored part of your eye. It's called the iris. And the hole in the middle is called your pupil. Then you have the nervous layer, which is the innermost layer. Woo which composes of your retina, and which is this orange area in the middle, in the back area right here. That's your retina. You have your fovea centralis, or your central fovea, which is this little 
yellow spot right here, and this is where, mo where most of the light um, concentrates on. You also have your optic disc, which is the, pretty much the space right here where um, is your blind spot is, and then this also what comes off of here is called your optic nerve, and that's where it goes to your brain. Um, so the space on top, uh, like where their nerve would go off, that's your blind spot. So that's what called your optic disc. Also you have their um, aura serrata, which is the serrated part, where the black is a little serrated. That's your aura serrata. Other things you need to know is your extrinsic muscles, which are the rectus and the oblique muscles of your eye, which help with eye movement. So the, all together they're called extrinsic muscles, these red things. Um, of course you have the lens, that's what you need to know. Then we have the different chambers. So, this back portion right here, this little chamber right here is called the vitreous chamber. Then in this vitreous chamber, the fluid in here is called the vitreous humor. Then you have the two chambers up front. So, you have the anterior chamber, which is in front of the, where the iris would split the two. So that you have, this is the, I don't know if it's really going like this. Oh, it's actually a little better. Um, in front of, this is your iris right here. <laughs> so like the space behind your iris is called your posterior chamber, while in front, like in between your lens and your cornea, is called the anterior chamber. So the way that your, um, and then the fluid that's in here is called your aqueous humor, and the way the aqueous humor flows is from your posterior chamber into your anterior chamber. So it goes, from your posterior chamber, it goes through your cornea, through your um, pupil, and it goes out through your anterior chamber. So that's how, that's the different chambers. So posterior comes from your iris and it ends on your lens, while your, uh, while your anterior chamber is between your cornea and your iris. Um, other things you need to know is your cross section of your cochlea, which you will find in your, um, in your book, of course. So definitely look at that. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I want to go, I don't have anything to go off, off by, I don't have any models or anything like that, so I'm sorry, but you have to kind of have to do that by yourself, but of course, look into your, look in your, in your little thing right here, so, if you don't have it with you, I have it right here. <laughs> this is, oh uh, yeah, so you do need to know this little section about the classic of your cochlea, and usually they'll have either a an actual microscope, although they'll just have a picture of it. Um, other things you need to know, um, we'll go over it to the section later. Um, we, have to, we have the different um, experiments that we did. So we have the visual, the vision experiments. And we did three vision experiments. Actually, I can move it. Oh, no, you can actually see it. Okay. Um, we have the blind spot, the visual acuity, and the color blindness. So your blind spot, you know where your blind spot is located? It's located in your optic, optic disc. disc. So um, that's where that's the test of where you had the X and the dot, and where you focus on the dot, and your peripheral vision, the dot disappeared. Um, so you can you just have to know the process of how to test that, and also where the blind spot is located in your eye, and why would it? Um, it's a blind spot because light would enter in, and it would. It would, the light would go towards your blind spot and you wouldn't be able to see it because there's no rods that come in that area. Um, next is the visual acuity. That's one where you have like the, the numbers or the letters up of the little chart and um, you had to test if you like what how well your vision is. So you have like what you need to know for that is like if you have like 2020 vision what that means. So pretty much um, um, the first 20 so like 2020 so you have 20 which means that what you what you can see at 20 is what a normal person would be able like uh, not normal of a person with perfect vision would see at at 20. However, it's 2040. What you're seeing at 20 meters, someone would normally see at 40 meters. And if someone if it's like 2080 or 2100, like what you're seeing at 20 is what uh, someone with perfect vision would see at 80 or 100. So what that's what what that means when the the numbers mean when you're having like 2020 vision, 2040 vision, um, 
like 2010 vision means that what you're seeing at 20 is what wait you're seeing at 10 is what someone would be seeing at 20 yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um other thing is the uh, color blindness um um, you just need to know the different types of color blindness. What does it mean to be color blind? It's pretty much when you see, can't see a certain color, or it's less distinct for you to be able to see. Um, there's different types which you'll be able to see in your in your lab book, I think. Um, other experiments that you did were audition experiments, um, which are your frequency range, your Weber test, and your Ryan test. So frequency range, that's when you have the um, the um, the tuning fork, sorry, and then you like, you hit it and then you'd see how far until you couldn't hear anymore. So that's pretty much testing of how far you can hear something. Um, that's dealing with like the further, you, the further it is, the, the, the quieter it will be, but if it's closer, it's louder, but then seeing how far you can actually hear. Um, that's the success of what that is. That's the range of how far you can hear. Um, also, um, Usually you can hear like lower frequencies, so like lower sounds you're able to hear, the range will be farther away. But like the higher sound is so high pitched, usually it'll be, it's like the range is shorter because you can't hear it. It's harder to, to hear from far away. Um, next is your Weber test and your Ryan test. Your Weber test is when you had the tuning fork like on top of your head, and then you would see if you could hear both the sound on both ears. If you could hear something more on one on one side of your ear than the other, that means that the one that you hear less, that's the that ear is a little bit deaf than the other. So this so what the Weber test is doing is that it's measuring um, ear deafness. So um, if you can't if you hear it one one sound but you can't really hear it on the other, that means you're deaf in that ear, the one that you can't hear in. And that's what so that's what the Weber test is doing. The Ryan test. Is all is measuring um, sound either through air or through your bone. So you would put it on your um, on behind your ear, so and you have it in front of your ear. So you need to see what you would hear better and what type of. So like your through your ear, that's like that's what you would hear. Like that's what you would normally just hear. But then through your bone, that's dealing more with vib a different like bone vibrations. So. Um, yeah, that's what that's the Ryan test is is measuring um, how well you can hear through bone or through air. Um, we also had sensory receptor experiments. We had a tactile localization and referred referred pain. Tactile localization is when you had where someone like put a dot and then you would have to make another dot and see how far between those dots that you felt. Um, what you need to know is one that with the one with the most accuracy was in your fingertips. And that's because you have, have a lot of nerve endings on that area, and that's kind of good because you touch a lot of things, and you need to be very sensitive in that way. So it's more sensitive in your fingers, and the where it's less sensitive is the back of your neck. Um, and that's because you have less nerve endings in the back there because you don't really need that many nerve endings in that area. So that's tactile localization. Refer pain, that's when you put your elbow into a, like a bucket full of ice, and what happened is that the, the area become numb, and then a pain would start... I'm coming from this air and it'll start going to your fingers. That's what's supposed to happen. It didn't happen to everyone when I did it, but um, it just has to be pretty cold to happen. But um, what would happen is that it would go and go to your, your pinkies and through your fingers right here. And that's because it goes through your ulnar nerve. And that's what you, that's what you need to know is that um, your ulnar nerve is affected is when you're having the test. So you're, that's what that is. And refer pain pretty much means that um, there's pain in an area other than where it occurs. So of course you have pain here, but if you have pain, refer pain means that you have pain in another part of your body other than where the pain is, where you are causing pain, pretty much. So that's refer pain. And that is lab 11. Uh, yeah. Happy studying. <laughs>